Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove any headgear from the presentation of The Colors by Parker Liedahl, John Garcia, Justice Johnson, and Faith Hansen under the direction of Colonel Muse. And the national anthem will, of course, be sung by the Fargo South Concert Choir under the direction of Miss Sarah McLeod. Class of 22 and all of their attendees, please. Do you have quorum? Quorum? Pardon? Oh, yeah, when everybody's. <laughs> As I was saying, feel free to be seated and get comfy. Thank you. Everybody good? No? Take your time. For any of you who might not know, my name is Kevlin Trevor Allen McNeil, and for the length of today's celebration, I'm going to be your Master of Ceremonies, which I think is a really cool title. Um, anywho, uh, before I start talking about all of the graduating class, I feel an overwhelming obligation to say some generally important things to a plethora of very important people. Um, to our faculty as a whole, who have helped further educational prowess and given us knowledge and inspiration throughout countless days and years, your efforts, your willingness and your contribution to us both as a class and as individuals do not go unrecognized. Your passion to provide us wisdom, to make us better individuals, and to help us mentor us while building relationships and frankly giving us advice that will in many instances last a lifetime. All of this does not go unrecognized. To the parents, guardians, and members of each of our families, your affection, attentiveness, and your support have brought many of us a long way, so long as to be sitting here today as a graduating class. These are selfless traits of both love and sacrifice, and they all do not go unrecognized. 
Lastly, I'd like to give a very special shout out to Corey, the IT guy, um, for helping me figure out how to log into Canvas on my phone during the last two weeks of my senior year, because you're the GOAT, no cap. Uh, all right, now, now that we're out of the lovey-dovey stuff is out of the way, uh, let's get straight to the point. Class of 2022, y'all look terrific. Emma? Emma, Emma J. Lotto? I'm looking at you, girl. Oh, sorry, where was I? I'm getting distracted. Um, some of us look a little nervous, and maybe that's just me, but uh, don't worry, because I'm right there with you. What's important is that we've made it. Everyone's journey has, without a doubt, been a little different and unique, individual, with respects to themselves, but no matter what roads or pathways you may have taken, we all made it to the same place. Our perseverance and determination as individuals has finally paid off. Now that I've rambled on long enough, uh, it is my honor to in initiate the beginning of the uh, commencement addresses. <clears throat> For our first speaker of the day, you'll be hearing from Guadalupe. Lupe has been involved in over 10 clubs at South. She's graduating with over 40 credits, has amassed over 346 hours of volunteering, and even with a lot going on in her life, Guadalupe will be graduating with honors and has been accepted to Oberlin College on a full ride scholarship in hopes to double major in music performance and biochem on the pre-med track. Selected as a very strong scholar, ooh, pardon me, scholar at Oberlin, Guadalupe will be conducting paid research during her four years at Oberlin. Please graciously welcome to the podium, Guadalupe Marino Garcia. Throughout our life, we've had many firsts. First days of elementary, middle, and high school. Our first words, our first cars, and even our first heartbreaks. Winning first place, or even being the first to do something big, such as being the first to graduate in your family. We come back and remember these times in our lives that seem so important to us. And these memories always bring me back to a famous quote that says, every adventure requires a first step. And for many of us, that first step is graduation. We are all here together taking the first step, even if this means that we might not end up on the same adventure. But that's okay, because class of 2022, I don't think I could be more honored to take my first step alongside yours together. It's sad, of course it is, to think that most of us will end on different paths, to think that this will be the last time we will all be together in a shared space. But we all have different adventures calling us and different goals we wish to accomplish. But we will always stand united as a class of 2022. In my journey, my first step is education. I take this step for myself, but also for my family. I am a first generation student, which means I am the first in the history of both sides of my family to graduate high school and go to college. Like I said, think about that for a second. In the whole history of my family, I will be the first to graduate and take that first step to college. It's been hard and there's no denying that. I remember at seven years old, outgrowing my mother's multiplication tables, moving on to harder math and relying on myself more than ever because my mother could no longer help me. I remember the afternoons at nine years old trying to do my homework and my mother with a bilingual dictionary sitting down next to me, translating word for word the assignment to help me do my homework. My parents, who came to this country in hopes for a better life for their children, who would work over 12 hour shifts every day in hope that their children might succeed and have a better life than they had. They always supported me in my education, putting it as first priority. My dad would always tell me, Pueden quitarte todo, pero nunca podrán quitarte tu educación. Which translate to, they can take away everything from you, but they will never be able to take away your education. And he isn't wrong. This will stick with me forever. And I know I am not alone. As you look around, there might be other fellow classmates sitting next to you that are the first to graduate as well. But we are still all in this together. 
some following a carved path, but others carving a path for their future generations to come. Last summer, I had the privilege of being accepted into LIDA, which is Leadership Enterprise for Diverse America, which is a selective program that helps high achieving, underrepresented students get into the nation's top colleges by providing them resources. Under normal and non-pandemic years, we are flown out to Princeton for seven weeks to be given resources such as writing classes, SAT and ACT prep, in order to help level the field for first generation students like me. Here, I was introduced to Earth's other first generation students. Before Alita, I had been ashamed of saying I was first gen. I felt inferior because I was left to believe that because my parents didn't have a higher education, that made me lesser. But I soon discovered that this was not true. I discovered that being a first generation student was empowering. I was breaking generational cycles that had been going on for hundreds of years. I was the one taking the first step, carving the way for my future children to follow. And I am no longer ashamed. I feel empowered to go out and make a difference in the world, while at the same time being a role model for other first generations, making them feel empowered as well. As I grow in my education, I would like to become a role model for other first-generation high schoolers. Right now, as a speaker, my voice raises for the countless students who have been told that they, were that they would never make it this far, that the odds were not in their favor, that statistically, they shouldn't be sitting here. I had every odd placed against me, but every time I overcame these, it made me a stronger person because it made me realize I had to work twice as hard to be able to stand a chance in this world. I've had to endure struggles that had made me question whether an education was worth it. When my teacher in elementary school told me that maybe school wasn't for me, when I had hurdles placed against me, when I wondered if it was even worth the jump. But I can firmly stand up here and say that it was worth it. The countless all-nighters, the language barrier I faced and shattered, and all my teachers that mentored me along the way and encouraged me made it 100% worth it in the end. I am a testimony that even when everything is placed against you, through hard work and perseverance, anything is possible. I am a testimony of that. Because of loving parents and my determination, I was able to accomplish my dreams. I was able to persevere through it all and come out at the top being accepted at Oberlin College, my dream school, with the full ride scholarship, being able to continue my love of education for free because the hard work paid off in the end. We are all here taking our first step together on this journey that will lead to separate adventures. We all have different paths we are following. Some are making the path for the first time. And yes, it won't be an easy one. There will be many hurdles we will all face, and even if we fall, we must always be able to stand back up and continue walking. We must find the internal motivation to keep us going. Find a purpose to keep taking these first steps in life. Because you can never begin your adventure if you never take the first step. Thank you very much, Lupe. <clears throat> For our next speaker, you'll be hearing from Addie Rome. Addie has been involved in choir, tennis, speech and debate, as well as philanthropy and youth during her time at Fargo South. She's going to be attending St. Olaf College next year, and although her major is currently undecided, she knows she's going to be singing in the choir and taking a beginning pottery class. Please join us in a round of applause to welcome Addie Rom. You have already heard it quite a few times today, but congratulations. The diploma you will receive in a short while is well-deserved and a physical reminder of your achievements here at Fargo South. Although walking across this stage means the end of one journey, new beginnings are just around the corner. Whether you spend your summer working to save up for college, going on fabulous trips and adventures, or just taking a well-deserved break, the unknown of the future unifies us all. The next years of our lives will be new 
and exciting. They will shape us in ways that we can't imagine, and we will discover things about ourselves that will lead into careers and lifestyles. To say the least, we have had an unusual high school experience. Disrupted in March of our sophomore year, COVID has been deciding our fates for two years now. We are just now getting to a point where many feel comfortable taking off their masks, gathering again, and returning to normal life. But the adversity that we face during quarantine and distance learning are experiences that have shaped us, not destroyed us. Some may say that this class would have been better off without the challenges, but I say the opposite. The challenges that we faced and overcame helped to mold us, shape us, put a fire in our bellies and give us inspiration and make us more motivated for success. Through this abnormal high school experience, we have had an exceptional high school experience. We won a girls hockey state championship, put on a fabulous sword fighting play, and went to the dance national competition. Without COVID and the challenges we went through, we would not have turned into the people we are today. Standing up to adversity taught us lessons that we would have learned much later in life. We have matured earlier, which is a gift. Now, as we move into the next stages of our lives, I challenge you to do good with the strengths and skills you have received in the past four years. Whether your next stage of life is technical school, a two or four year university, military, or the workforce, don't stay stagnant. Continue to grow your mind, strengths, and heart Get involved with your community and strive to make it a better one. Your actions may be big or small, but we all have the strength and ability to do great things. If only we would surround ourselves with those who lift us up and believe that we have an impact beyond our own lives. I met you all in seventh grade after attending a much smaller school. And I remember my first day of Carl Ben, and specifically the people who made it just a little bit better. So before I even went in the building, I was nervous, and I wasn't sure where to go until the bell rang, and 400 students went sweeping up the main staircase, and they swept me up in it. Now I had planned my first day of school outfit meticulously, a new dress and a pair of ballet flats that were just the tiniest bit too big. So next thing I know, I'm walking up the stairs, and I lose one shoe, and then the other, and next thing I know, I'm standing at the top of the stairs, barefoot. And I'm looking down at the stairs, and I can't go down because kids are coming up. So I just stand there and hope that someone will pick up my shoes. And someone does. And someone I don't even know, a stranger, picks up my shoes, hands them to me, and walks away. So I put them on and go to class. The next person that made my day a little bit better is Mrs. Van Zulen. Mrs. Van Zulen liked to play friendly tricks on our librarian, and on the first day of school, encouraged us all to give fake names to him as we went to check out our PLDs for the year. And she told me, because I was new, that I had the best chance of tricking him. So we went down to the library, and he asked me for, for my name, and I tell him, Chrysanthemum. He looks at me, he says, well, how do you spell that? And if anyone knows me, I'm a horrible speller. So this was my worst nightmare. And I go, C, R, Y, S, Anthemum. I want to thank Mrs. Van Zulen for encouraging me to use my personality and creativity in a situation that was difficult and uncertain. The last person was Marianne. Mary Ann and I had Mr. Jacobson's science class together, and lunch was in the middle of this period. When it was time for lunch, and everyone went into their separate groups and headed down to the lunchroom, and I kind of hanged out behind them. And then suddenly, Mary Ann was at my side, asking me if I wanted to sit with her, and then asking me all sorts of questions about my life. We had lunch together for the rest of seventh grade. And although we're not really friends anymore, I will never forget the kindness she extended me on my first day as a Bruin. So to all of you, 
as you go out to your next first day, I want to gift you three people. One stranger to gift you a random act of kindness. A Mrs. Van Zuland to foster your personality and creativity. And a Marianne to talk to you and to give you comfort. Thank you to the fabulous teachers and staff of Fargo South. Congratulations to my peers and thank you. Thank you very much, Abby. Now our next speaker is, um, <clears throat> well, it's an individual who has no need for introduction. It's the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Birch. Come on up. Thank you, Kevlin. <clears throat> Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you present today to celebrate the academic accomplishments of the Fargo South Class of 2022. Welcome graduates, parents, guardians, family members, and friends. In 1967, South High opened their doors for the first time. Today, we are celebrating the 54th class that has graduated from Fargo South, and we continue to, to uphold the tradition of excellence. I am proud to report that the members of this class showed what it means to be a Bruin and to do things the Bruin way. Congratulations, guys, and well done. Speaking of thanks, I express my thanks and gratitude to the parents, guardians, and family members for the encouragement and support provided to the graduates throughout their years of education and activity involvement. They would not be here today if it was not for your love, support, and encouragement. It has been our privilege to assist in their social and educational development. Economically, I suppose that was we call the uh, graduation uh, um, celebrations, right? Fundraisers, sorry about that. <laughs> Another group of people that deserve recognition and many thanks are all the teachers and staff. And this includes the former elementary and middle school teachers and staff. I especially want to acknowledge the faculty and staff of Fargo South High School for their efforts and dedication to this class. At this time, would the South High staff and teachers and any other elementary or middle school Bruin teachers please stand and be recognized. Also, it is my privilege to share with you one special guest we have as a teacher. Uh, Mrs. Hintz, if she would stand, please. Mrs. Hintz is retiring this year, and she spent 37 years as an RN and 10 of those years as our health science instructor here at South High School. So Mrs. Hintz, thank you very much for your years of service as a teacher and also as an RN. On a sad note, the community of South High lost a member of our teaching staff a little over a week ago. Cindy Evenson lost her battle with cancer. Throughout this year, Cindy fought through a great deal of pain and discomfort. She did everything in her power to overcome her illness and always give her best. Cindy was truly a fantastic person and is the epitome of a Bruin family member who always was striving for excellence. At this time, I would just ask that we take a moment of silence for Cindy and her family. Thank you. Graduates, my final message to you is to share a poem titled, A Poem of Thanks, by an unknown author. Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there to be looked forward to? Be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times, you grow. Be thankful for your limitations, because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary, because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things, 
a life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for the setbacks. Gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be thankful for your struggles, and they will become your blessings. Over the past four years, as you've heard, I can say that you've encountered many challenges and growth opportunities because of COVID and the pandemic. You've spent 2.75 years traditional learning days and 1.25 years being non-traditional. Activities were interrupted, school and family events were canceled or postponed. So I ask you, are you bitter or better because of your challenges, struggle, or difficult times? And what did you learn you would not have learned without this disruption? As I watched and learned from this class, I know that you are all better. You persevered, you overcame, you were resilient to the challenges during your high school years. Because of your experiences, you are further ahead than previous high school graduates. Booker T. Washington said, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Success happens in small steps, and each one of you will experience different obstacles that will help you define your own success. Recall from the poem that not having all that you want or having all the answers provides for growth and appreciation. Be thankful for your time at South High School. I, we, are thankful for you. It has been the pleasure of the faculty, staff, and administration of South High to prepare, encourage, inspire, and motivate you to achieve your academic success. Graduates, maximize your ability and potential to be the best version of yourself as you strive for excellence and do so with Bruin class. And once again, at South High, we represent class as character, leadership, attitude, scholarship, and service. It's my honor to say congratulations. One last time, once a Bruin. Always a Bruin. Thank you. Bef before I certify the class of 2022 to get their diplomas, it's my pleasure to say thank you to Dr. Gandhi for his leadership as a superintendent of Fargo Schools and our Fargo Public School board members, Jim Johnson and Dr. Tracy Newman, for their service and for being here to award diplomas. I would also like to thank um, our Hall of Fame and alumnus, Jim Johnson, for serving on the school board for 21 years. We have appreciated your, appreciated your leadership, guidance, support, as you modeled what it means to strive for excellence. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. At this time, I certify that the students in the Fargo South High class of 2022 that are about to receive their diplomas have met all the requirements that have been established by the Fargo Board of Education and the North Dakota Department of Public Instruction. At this time, with the first, two, or first row stand up and approach the stage. As we transition to the awarding of diplomas, I would also ask and thank that any veteran, active duty, or reserve member of the armed forces, please stand at this time and be recognized. As we all know with Memorial Day, um, we thank all those who have also served our great country that cannot be here today. Are we ready? Excellent. Okay, let's get ready to turn those tassels. Marian Abdirahman. Abdul Aziz Abdul Kareem. Mohammed Abdurrahim. Reese Amundsen.
Kyle Anderson. Abram Anderson. Riley Anir. Chase Bachmeyer. Matthias Barnhart. Michelle Bent. Bowden Berg. Liv Berger. Alexis Bergson. Elsa Bernard. Haley Bow. Brianna Borgen. Logan Brown. Sydney Carroll. Hannah Caraview. Mary Chol. Madeline Crystal. Joseph Kreps. Paris Cronin. Nock Dong. Trevor Detling. Ruth Deutsch. Joanna Dimitrova. Jenny Doe. Emma Doctor. Garrett Donley. Aaron Donovan. Jackson Dresser. Keely Eshorn. Madison Eisenlor. Braden Ellenson. Jennifer Espinoza. Claire Falk. Courtney Feist. Ariana Ferris. Shaley Fletcher. Kelsey Folligstad. Jessica Frank. Draven Franks. Martin Fredericks the fifth. Joshua Fries. Damian Freisinger. Gabriella Gomez. Leah Gingrich. Carissa Guzdal. Ah. 
Isla Green. Laura Green. Zoe Grossnickel. Erica Gunderson. Lene Gunnarsson. Sullivan Hager. Chase Hahn. September Hamilton. Molly Hansen. Madison Harris. Alexis Hagen. Christina Henry. Cade Her. Benjamin Hills. Savannah Holby. Faith Hodge. Amy Hung. Kaylee Hop. Imari House. Darby Human. Yasser Husseini. Catherine Iverson. Scarlar Jefferson Jr. Davis Jensen. Samantha Jerome. Bryn Johnson. Lexis Johnson. Mangao Jock. Colby Jones. McKenna Yonke. Alexander Kalk. Jocelyn Kennedy. Gavin Jono. Aiden Klink. Jackson Corbel. Chase Corinta. Seth Koskella. Jack Kringley.
Emma Lotto. McKenna Langston. Nicholas Lee. Zoe Lee. Sung Lian. Ryan Livedahl. Veronica Logan. Guadalupe Marino Garcia. Lance McCullough. Gabrielle McGarvey. Zunikia Diamond McGill. Duncan McGraw. Kevlin McNeil. Jessica Mendoza Montano. Skylar Monson. Gunnar Moody. Zachary Morse. Blake Murchie. Bryn Nelson. Leonard Nesdal. Min No. Caden Nielsen. Isabella Nikel. Colin Nylander. Yasir Omar. Braxton Overgard. Luenci Paya Paya. Nash Penner. Laura Fawn. Carter Pikarski. Uriah Powell. Alina Rye. Pradeep Rai. Trinity Ralph. Yeah. 
Adeline Rom. Morgan Reeder. Gretchen Reich Keller. Kiana Robinson. Joshua Schatzky. Luke Schilke. Mercedes Schumacher. Jacob Selseth. Gabriella Sharp. Christian Skipple. Kevin Steinbach, Jr. Ian Strand. Rand Stroh. Taylor Strook. Allison Suda. Anisha Sunar. Ram Tang. Kaylee Thompson. Shelton Thornton the third. Patience Toe. Sophie Torres. Allison Trimmer. Reese Turner. Christian Allman. Kiara Usury. Lynn Vo. Adeline Wagner. Kate Wall. Emily Weiler. Marisol Wentling. Xander Winning. Tatum Williams. Devin Wilmore. Jada Ralstead. Mazen Zachary. Jocelyn Zahn.
all have our diplomas now. Um, cool. Uh, now that that's over, I believe we're going to hear benediction from the uh, choir, correct? Is that what's up next? Yeah? Oh, is it? Oh, there we are. A little bit louder. Nice. Sorry about that. I believe we're going to hear benediction now from the choir under the direction of Miss Sarah Licklau. All right, now for our closing speech, while he makes his way over here, you're going to be hearing about a very dear friend of mine. He's been involved in jazz, choir, theater, improv, and National Honor Society, and will be uh, with... Should have printed this bigger, sorry. There we go. He'll be attending... Oh, my goodness. So anyone want to come help me read this? I'm so sorry. Graduating with honors. Wow, there we are. Anywho... He has a passion for the sciences and especially space. And next year, he's going to be attending NDC, where, along with being one of my sweet mates, uh, he's also going to be majoring in choral music education. He plans to continue being a part of his passions and is excited for the next chapter in his life. Please welcome to the podium, Ian Strand. Hello, my name is Ian George Strand, and I've been a student here in the FPS school district since I was five when I moved here from Nebraska, of all places. <laughs> now, I know what you're all thinking. Another speech? Luckily, my portion is the closer. So I'll have you all out of here in around five minutes. Guys, do you remember anything from middle school? Now, some of you might be nodding slowly, trying not to remember. And you know what? That's just fine. But we did at least make some memories there. Good, bad, and everything in between. The last day of sixth grade, where we were shuttled into our science classrooms to protect us from the freak storm that appeared over us all of a sudden. The Team Olympics were Jagger Johnson's sweeped events for the Broncos. Field trips, concerts, games, everything. We survived it, just to be shoved into high school immediately after. But we made even more memories here. School spirit events, homecoming games, prom, and even that Friday two years ago during eighth period when school was canceled for COVID. We went home and waited for any news on what was going to happen next. Then we heard about online learning and labor, later hybrid learning in the fall. But just like in middle school, we survived through that as well. Then just like that, two years later through all that craziness, we reached graduation. You know, often I've thought about what it's like to graduate. 
to be on this stage, walking across it, to receive a diploma marking the grand conclusion of our 13-year journey. But never did I stop and realize that, whoa, wait, this is actually happening. And then, boom, suddenly we're in this fever dream of last week, pre prepping for the end of our K-12 through careers, though I'm immensely grateful for everything we've been given here as students at South. The faculty who organize events and keep our building running. The building itself we've practically spent a quarter of our lives in. The PLDs, or personal learning devices, which have caused us so much pain and frustration, I'm still thankful for. And I think we need to thank each other. Our bond as a class goes beyond the label of being a Bruin. I mean, I've met so many incredible people, people who I know I will be friends with until I grow old, people who have encouraged me to keep going even when everything seemed dark and impossible, people who I see as my family. I also want to thank the teachers, some of which have touched our lives in indescribable ways. For me personally, our choir teacher, Mrs. Licklau, has changed my life forever. She's become like a second mother for me and so many others, a lady who I look up to with such high regard because of her ability to transform amateur singers coming in from middle school, like myself, into ones who now feel confident and strong on a stage. She cares so deeply for each of her students. Truth be told, my heart breaks knowing that I won't see her every day because senior year naturally is filled with many lasts. Senior night for sports, the last game in a tournament that marks the end of your final season, the last concert after months of dedication and practice, the last performance for a show for theater, the last step in a state winning dance routine, the last school lunch after 13 years, the last time Sherry greets you with a smile at the South Doors, as she has for a lot of us the past four years. And today, the last time this class will be together. The last time we'll see many of the friends we made over the years, no matter how small the bond was. As I wrap this up, and as I look around at everyone in our class, all I see is a sea of people who are passionate, endearing, intelligent, empathetic, and eternally connected through our lives as Bruins. While we might move away across the globe, achieving different goals, and carving separate paths in life, we can always look back at the memories we made here. We have and will continue to do incredible things in the world. The trials and tribulations we have been put through have not been trivial, but we have come out the other side strong and with the knowledge that our class as one and as individuals will push through the rest of life with our heads held high, our chest puffed out with courage, and our souls and minds clear, filled with love through the memories we made together. Together, as one class, as one big family. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ian. He lied about the five minute thing, uh, by the way. I'm gonna talk more. Um, sorry. <laughs> I think right now, Mr. Tackman's giving me a very keen eye. School song? One last time, school song? Okay, perfect. Take it away, Tackling.
you guys want to stay standing or seat, I'm just going to speak a couple sentences, and then I think I'm going to get us out of here. Um, well, I'd like to start by saying we made it. This is the end. But as many optimists and bright minds have stated throughout time, every ending is a new beginning. And a door must close for another to open. And trust me, when I look around this room, I see a lot of doors opening to greater things. I hope everyone who is present today is extremely proud of how far they've come, and not only how far they have come, but will continue to be proud of how far they go. I'd like to leave you with a couple of few wise words from modern American songwriter, rapper, producer, and philosopher, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Live your life. Live it right. Be different and do different things. Take advantage, do your best, and do not stress. You was granted everything inside this planet, anything you imagine, you possess. With that being said, I am indefinitely and indubitably happy to finally say congratulations to the class of 22. And we're gonna do the hat thing now, okay? And before we do this, I need you guys to know this is very important. I was told this by my mom. Take your tassels off. I do not need you guys losing your tassels, okay? What? Okay, on one, okay? Three, two, one!